Let's talk about acids and bases. From the section 19.1 reading that you did last night, you saw that there are three general theories for defining acids and bases. The first theory is the Arrhenius theory. And according to Arrhenius, an acid is anything that is capable of producing hydrogen ions. Since we're talking about a hydrogen positive ion, that means it's behaving as a cation. And so we can often recognize an acid because you'll have a hydrogen in the cation position of the substance. The definition of a base, according to Arrhenius, is any substance that's capable of producing hydroxide ions. And therefore, you will see hydroxide in the anion position, such as when we saw sodium hydroxide. We had hydroxide ions in the anion position. The Arrhenius theory is very useful. A lot of people are familiar with it, but it doesn't cover everything. As we saw from the lab the other day, something like ammonia, NH3, behaves as a base, but it doesn't contain any hydroxide ions, so it doesn't fit the Arrhenius theory. So our theories had to be expanded to cover other concepts and other substances. According to the Bronsted-Lowry definition, an acid is anything that donates or gives away hydrogen ions. And a base is anything that accepts or takes those hydrogen ions. We're going to spend a lot of time with the Bronsted-Lowry definition, so we'll discuss this in just a moment. The other theory that exists is the Lewis theory. The Lewis theory covers even more things. Um, and the focus here with the Lewis theory is looking at what's happening with available electrons. And this is easiest to understand if you actually draw structures out, but we're not going to do that. What I want you to understand is that there is a third theory out there, and this theory focuses on electron pairs. So a Lewis acid is anything that accepts electron pairs, and a Lewis base is anything that donates electron pairs. So I want you to be aware that this third theory is out there, but we're not going to spend most, much time on it. Most of our attention is going to be spent on the Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases. One of the things I want you to understand, too, is that when we talk about a hydrogen ion, sometimes we might write it or we might call it a hydronium ion. So as you can see in the note in the paragraph below, it says that a free dissociated proton, okay, so a hydrogen ion, also known as a proton, we'll get to that in a minute, does not actually exist in water. So a hydrogen ion floating around can't maintain itself. It's quickly sucked up, it has a very strong attraction to the other water molecules that might be in the solution. And so a hydrogen ion will very, very quickly become hydrated or quickly attach itself to a water molecule and becomes what we call a hydronium ion with a formula of H3O+. Okay, so just keep that in mind because you'll see H3O pluses all over the place and sometimes we'll call them hydrogen ions and hydronium ions. Okay? So let's take a look at question number one. Bronsted-Lowry reactions, as we said before, are focused on the transfer of hydrogen ions, also known as proton transfer. So I want you to pause for a moment and think, why are hydrogen ions and proton terms synonymous? Okay, so did you think about why a hydrogen ion and a proton are the same thing? Why are they synonymous? Imagine the structure of a hydrogen atom. Hydrogen, being the first element on the periodic table with an atomic number of one, has one proton and one electron. And its atomic mass is one, therefore it has no neutrons. Therefore, if we are going to have the hydrogen atom become a positive hydrogen ion, it loses that one electron to form a cation, and all that's left behind is one proton. Therefore, hydrogen ions are the same thing as saying protons. Now let's take a look at some reactions. We have to go back to thinking about the definition of a Bronsted-Lowry acid and base. We want to think about substances that are capable of donating hydrogens and substances that are capable of accepting hydrogen ions. Water is going to be a little weird. Water is capable of donating 
and accepting hydrogen ions. It can either act as an acid or a base. And we say that something that can behave as an acid or a base is amphoteric. And you'll see that word at the bottom of this worksheet. When we're dealing with Bronsted-Lowry acid-base reactions, we want to take a look at the whole equation and see what's happening in this system. And what we're going to do is draw arrows that show us where the hydrogen ions are coming from and going to. So let's take a look at reaction one. We have HCl plus H2O goes to H3O plus plus Cl minus. You probably notice a double-headed arrow here. That means that these reactions are reversible. They can occur both in the forward and the reverse direction. So we'll just read it in the direction that we see written here. So if I start with hydrochloric acid, hydrochloric acid on my reactant side is HCl, and on my product side is just Cl minus. HCl has hydrogens in it and therefore is capable of donating those hydrogens. So I'm going to draw an arrow from HCl over to water and indicate that the hydrogen ion is moving from HCl to H2O. The substance that donates the hydrogen ion is an acid, and the substance that accepts the hydrogen ion is a base. Now we'll often talk about Bronsted-Lowry conjugate acid-base pairs, and all we're talking about when I say the word conjugate is what happened to the substance on the product side of the reaction. So once HCl donates its hydrogen ion, what remains behind? What remains behind is just a chloride ion. And so what was once an acid is now going to behave as a base. And if we have H2O that behaved as a base and accepted the hydrogen ion, now on the opposite side of the equation, it will behave as an acid. And once again, we can see with our arrows, H3O plus has an extra hydrogen now that it would be capable of donating to the chloride ion. There's no hydrogens on the chloride ion, so the hydrogen uh, has to come from H3O plus. And any substance that donates hydrogen ions is an acid, and the substance that accepts the hydrogen ions is the base. So by drawing arrows, we can keep track of things. And if you take a look at the color codes I've used, I've highlighted some things in blue and some things in green, and I'll explain those in just a little bit. So let's get, continue on with some of the other reactions. Take a look at reaction two. We have NH3 and H2O. A helpful hint is to just embed in your brain that NH3 is always going to behave as a base. Right, so might just want to get this into your head right now. The NH3 is always going to behave as a base. And again, water could be amphoteric and behave as either an acid or a base. If NH3 is going to behave as a base, then that means it's going to accept a hydrogen ion. So the hydrogen ion must be coming off of the water, and therefore the water has to act as the acid. If we look at the other side of the equation, once NH3 accepts the hydrogen ion, now it's become NH4+. Plus. And what was once a base, its conjugate partner is now an acid. H2O was an acid. It donated away or gave away a hydrogen ion. What would remain behind? OH- minus, and that is now behaving as a base. Once again, we can draw our arrows and see that NH4 plus has an extra hydrogen ion that it could donate away, and OH minus would remain behind. So that's what we're going to do. We're drawing arrows back and forth, looking at where are the hydrogen ions coming from. So take a couple of uh, moments and see if you can predict how I'm going to draw the arrows and labels the other three, uh, the other reactions, three and four.
Okay, I figure that's a long enough awkward pause for a video. So if you haven't done it, please, please, please be thinking about what I'm doing. So again, I'm going to draw where the acid um, is donating a hydrogen from and what it's donating hydrogen to. So if I look at H2SO4, and I look on the other side of the equation, I can see it turns into HSO4 minus, so one of the hydrogens is gone. Therefore, H2SO4 must have given away a hydrogen, and therefore H2SO4 is the acid. Water accepted it, and it's behaving as the base. Look on the next side of the equation, I can see that the acid, H2SO4, since it lost a hydrogen ion, is now HSO4 minus, and therefore this is the conjugate base. H2O accepted a hydrogen ion, is now H3O plus, and will behave as the conjugate acid. Once again, draw our arrows to see how it would work in the reverse reaction. Last one, CO3 2 minus obviously doesn't have any hydrogen ions it can donate, therefore it must be accepting them. So we can tell that HBr will be our acid, CO3 2 minus will be our base, and on the opposite side of the equation, Br minus doesn't have any hydrogen ions, therefore it must be receiving them. And so Br minus is the conjugate base, and H3O minus is the conjugate acid. So again, when I say conjugate acid base pairs, all I'm talking about is the acid on the reactant side turns into a base on the product side because it lost a hydrogen ion. The base on the reactant side becomes an acid on the product side because it gained a hydrogen ion. And then we can think about the reverse reaction. So we talk about bronsted lowry acid-base reactions as having two acids and two bases. We consider them to be conjugate acid-base pairs. So if we flip over to the back side of the worksheet, we can identify the acid-base pairs from reactions one, two, three, and four. And actually, as I drew the arrows and was writing them out, I color-coded them for you. So the difference between a conjugate acid-base pair is just going to be a single hydrogen ion. So if we look at reaction one, we started off with HCl, hydrochloric acid, and when it donated away or gave away its hydrogen ion, what remained behind was just a chloride ion. So they differ by one hydrogen ion. The other acid-base pair is H3O plus and H2O. Those are the other acids and bases in this entire reaction. And typically we write the acid first and the base second. So if we look at reaction number two, here we have H2O as our acid. It donated away its hydrogen ion, leaving behind OH minus as its base. Again, it differs by one hydrogen ion. And the other acid-base pair, again we write the acid first, is NH4+. Plus. And if it gave away its hydrogen ion, it would become NH3. So you can see, when I say an acid-base pair, I'm not talking about the acid and base on the reactant or the product side. I'm talking about an individual species one of the reactants behaved as an acid and became a conjugate base. The other reactant was a base and became a conjugate acid. Those are the acid-base pairs I'm talking about here. So if we continue on with reaction three and four, I'm going to write really slow to see if you're paying attention, if you're able to predict what I'm going to write. H2, SO4 is the acid. It gives away a hydrogen ion, it will become HSO4 minus. Notice the charge change. Think about that. The other acid base pair in reaction 3, H3O plus. If it gave away a hydrogen ion, it would be 
H2O. Last one. HBr. If it gives away a hydrogen ion, it becomes Br minus. And our other pair, HCO3 minus, CO3 2 minus. So that's how we write out Bronsted Lowry acid base pairs. Drawing the arrows can be really, really useful. And so you can see what substance is giving up and donating the hydrogen ions and what substance is receiving them. And then you can complete the equation by seeing what's happening on the other side or by knowing that the difference between a conjugate acid base pair will simply be one hydrogen ion. So I'm going to stop the video here and I want you to work on the rest of this worksheet and we'll talk about it later on. Good luck!